Good morning, developers. My name is Rob, and this video is part of a larger course on MediaSoup and how to use the API, how to leverage the node module and the front end to make a live streaming or a video conferencing app. This might be uh, all that you need, but if you, you are looking for more, more detail, uh, I will drop a link in the description. Over to MediaSoup.org in the browser. If you load this up yourself and it looks totally different, you can still feel free to follow along with me if you're still watching uh, this video, that means that, uh, that, that things haven't changed enough to where I needed to redo it. If things have changed enough, you'll be watching a different video, but websites get redesigned, so uh, follow along wherever you would like to. Uh, I am going to push a lot on you here, a lot of what MediaSoup claims, so follow along as best you can. You can always come back and check this out later. Some of it is not going to be relevant uh, to you yet. All you want to do is make a make a video conferencing app and, and just get the basics down. Just just want to go over quickly what they claim about themselves and, and what the, the API has to offer. It says right at the top that MediaSoup cutting edge WebRTC video conferencing. Break this down quickly. Cutting edge, if I go over to GitHub quickly, uh, this is the node module. There's uh, there's actually five different repos we'll, we'll see in a second. But if you go down the right side, two days, nine months, two days, two days, yesterday, et cetera, right? Yesterday, last week, last week. They've done a fantastic job in my experience of keeping it updated and, and very much using cutting edge stuff, staying on top of things. So I think this is true and it, it really does make a huge difference in something like video conferencing which is taxing on the network and on the devices. Staying on top of this is very, very important, and MediaSoup does a great job. WebRTC, we talked about this on the board, but strictly speaking, we will not be using the WebRTC API to make the connection. That is a JavaScript thing, and we're going to be going from JavaScript to the server or, or to a node module, however you want to say it. We will be using the WebRTC protocols. So, for instance, ICE candidates. We will be using the same architecture and the, the protocols that WebRTC has outlined. So it remains WebRTC in that sense, even though, as I said, we won't be using the peer-to-peer -peer API that, that WebRTC has. Video conferencing, that's what it's meant for. You could potentially use it for other things, but uh, that's probably why you're here so uh, easy enough. Um, it is a node module, and it is also a Rust Crate. So if you haven't seen Cargo before, that's Rust's uh, package manager. But it is a powerful SFU. We'll come back to this in a second. It features simulcast, SVC, and a transport, a bandwidth estimation. So some awesome features that, again, we want, we want to stay as, as front-facing as we possibly can with something like video streaming. It, it's in more than one platform. And then the client-side libraries, we are obviously going to use the JavaScript library here, the MediaSoup client, but there is also a libmediaSoup client, which is a C++ library, if you wanted to run uh, somewhere else and, and still have a unified API. We're not going to do the C++ part, uh, at least I don't intend to, but they do exist. Down at the bottom here, these are the five repositories that I mentioned that make up MediaSoup. This first one is the SFU itself. So this thing is a node module, it's not a server, and we'll come back to that, but uh, only 5,000 weekly downloads, we need to change that. <laughs> but um, that is the, the node module, the server side part for our applications. MediaSoup Rust, this is the same thing, but a Rust crate. MediaSoup Client, this is the JavaScript portion, we we'll get a little more for weekly downloads, but this is the part that's gonna run uh, in the browser. The libmediaSoup client, again, that's the C++ part. And then this here, this uh, AIO RTC, this is uh, for Python. So if you wanted to use MediaSoup with Python, this is the, the thing that you would use, or WebRTC. Um, I'm going to click on Documentation. That's going to bring us to this page, and I'm going to click on Overview. And this is where it breaks down an SFU. So we saw that back on the home page there. Powerful SFU. Come back over here. An SFU is a selective forwarding unit. It receives audio and video streams from endpoints and relays them to everyone else. Now, here's an important thing to note about SFUs. The endpoints send one and receive many. So if I click on SFU here, it takes us to another site, bloggeek.me. You can read through this if you'd like a little bit more detail. I'm not going to spend time on it, at least yet. Maybe we'll add a video in the utility section at the end. But 
this is the mesh technology, this, this diagram here, which is <laughs> better, better than what I would draw on the board. But that's what WebRTC uses out of the box. And it's, it's not okay <laughs> because it's not going to be able to, to go very long. And SFU over here, everybody uploads their one stream and downloads whatever they need from everybody else. And it always comes from the server. An MCU in the middle there, that thing uploads one and downloads one. So if we keep going a little bit farther, each receiver endpoint can select which streams. So this is a client, the receiver endpoint, can select which streams and uh, spatial or temporal layers it receives. That's in comparison with a mixer or MCU, not, not Marvel Comic Universe, but multi-point conferencing unit. This thing mixes and sends back a stream. So you get whatever the server sends you, and that's what you display. So you don't really have any choice over what you're going to get. In the case of an SFU, you can decide what you, what you want to receive and therefore what you want to show. Um, this is always up for debate, and you, you may or may not know enough to argue with it, but this design, SFU, leads to better performance, higher throughput, and less latency. Whether or not that's true, this is definitely true. It's highly scalable, requires much less resources given that it does not transcode or tr mix media. The main drawback, in my experience, of an MCU is that they are incredibly expensive because the server has to do so much work transcoding so much data. That is not going to happen here. Uh, the SFU processes and then lets the client decide what it wants to, sort of. <laughs> uh, since the endpoints get other endpoints media separately, they can have a personalized layout, as we just mentioned. You can see what you want to see rather than just what the server sends you and choose uh, which streams to render and how to display them. So we as web developers on the front end have a lot more control over what we're, we're actually going to do. Uh, scrolling down a bit here, design goals. Media Soup and its client side libraries, we're, again, we're only going to work with the Node module and the JavaScript part. So we'll, we'll have those two. One is to be an SFU. That's this part. And it does a very good job of that. Support both WebRTC and plain RTP input and output. I'm going to hop down here to be a super low level API. Now, something, something to know up front here Media Soup, the API. Sometimes I, I want things to just be high level. I don't, I don't want to know what's going on under the hood. Just tell, just give me a method and hide all the wires. MediaSoup gives us a ton of control if you want it. So we're going to use WebRTC, but if there's other stuff you want to do, like use plain RTP or down here, enable integration with well-known uh, multimedia libraries and tools, if you've got something you want to integrate with and you need lower level control, it does exist. So this part here is, is saying, hey, you can use WebRTC, which we are going to, but if you want to go off on your own and get more into the C++, the, the, the transport layer, the networking protocols, and so on, you, you can, which is a good thing. Uh, it's just you have to be careful because if, if you walk up to a coffee maker that has a thousand buttons to, to make a cup of coffee can be pretty daunting. Uh, we need to figure out which buttons to push, and then as your needs grow, you can get to know the API better. Uh, it is it is a very tiny client library, and that is a good thing to offload as much work as we can uh, to the server and keep keep the work on the clients as little as possible because it's going to be doing a lot of downloading and uploading. Be minimalist. Everybody seems to say that, but it just wants to handle the media layer. We'll come back to that in a second. It doesn't mandate any uh, mandate any signaling protocol. Just like WebRTC, you can use carrier pigeons if you want to. We are going to use Socket. Uh, socket IO. And then down below, the, the use cases, as we already talked about, it's because it's a low level API, whatever your use case is, you should be able to, to make it work. Group video chat applications, that's going to be the main one that you're, you're probably going to want to fall on. Another awesome use case will be a one to many broadcasting, like say Twitch. If you were going to stream or you had a, a, a user that wanted a video and audio and send that out to a whole bunch of people who are just going to consume, You'll see that Media Soup is perfect for that, uh, and then RTP streaming down here at the at the bottom. If we briefly go back over here, and I'm going to click on the, the V3 documentation, if if we go to the design right here and briefly look at this, it says unlike other existing SFU implementations, it's not a standalone server, but an unopinionated Node.js module. So this would stand in contrast with say. Janus or Jitsi or Corento, those are the, the other three I guess that I have used. Those are full-blown servers. 
MediaSoup is so nice if you're a Node.js developer or, or you've got a, a web background because you can just require the Node.js module and immediately integrate it in your application. Now, it's most of our app that we make is going to be uh, is going to be using uh, MediaSoup. But if you had a bigger application or you wanted to use Corento Media Server for some reason, you can. It's not a server in itself. It's just <laughs> this line right here with a whole bunch of, of good stuff inside of it. Uh, we talked about this here already, but the media soup, the SFU part has two parts. There's the, the, the JavaScript node API part, and then there's a whole bunch of C, C++ that deals with the media portion. So ICE candidates, DTLS, etc. We are not gonna interact with this. I do not like reading or writing C++ anymore. Those days are mostly behind unless I have to. Uh, we are gonna be here. This is what's required for the course. C and C++ are not. Final thought here, both components, so the JavaScript layer as well as the, the C, C++, they communicate to each other by means of a inter-process communication. From our perspective, right, from the, the view of the developer, the application should just care about the JavaScript API integration. We require a node module and then we grab the, the JavaScript or the client portion and, and they talk to each other. We don't need to know about this at all. The features and then we'll hop over to the board and draw uh, this out a little bit differently. We already talked about this. Uh, it's a low level API. Uh, it supports multiple streams. This part down here, simulcast and SVC support. Uh, simulcast means that we can send multiple streams over the same pipe, so to speak, or the same network connection. Kind of like multiplexing in Socket.io if you're familiar with that. Uh, simulcast is a, is a great way to lower bandwidth. SVC is even nicer. That stands for scalable video coding, and we're not gonna talk about that at least in the first couple modules, neither, neither one of these actually, but SVC allows you to send a stream with multiple layers, and then the, the server and or the client can make decisions about what to use there. It includes con congestion control. That's really important because we know with the, the bandwidth estimation, kind of which client is where, MediaSoup can help figure out who should be getting what, but just based on network factors. That's that next part here. There's bandwidth estimation. And then lastly, uh, the subworker process, which we'll look at on the board here in a minute. Okay, that's kind of media soup in a nutshell. Like I said, I know there's a lot going on here, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what it's trying to do, the problem it's trying to solve, and why this is a great solution.